three years ago, two crazy Englishmen bought a four-year-old thoroughbred koi carp on a trip to Hiroshima, Japan. It just took my breath away. Yeah, the, the fish was mind-blowing. It used to be a completely Japanese affair. Then we found the price, and that shocked us both. The fish has grand champion potential. Never before has the All Japan, the number one koi show in the world, been won by someone from the West. You're playing with the big boys now. We're on the verge of making history. This fish could do this and bam, bam, bam. Yeah, there was a little bit of bad feeling last year. By next year's show, the koi will be bigger, better, and poised to break a century-long Eastern stronghold on Japan's most celebrated accolade. So if, if it lands on uh, 10, yeah. he gets a 4.5, yeah? yeah? For two. Yeah. If it lands on other one, yeah. you get five for two. OK. OK? OK. Ichi, ni, san. Hi, I'm uh, Tony Pittam from Koi Water Barn, uh, a koi dealer from the UK, uh, established in 1983. Uh, and yeah, it was always our dream or my dream to win the All Japan Koi Show. A Japanese koi fish is a beautiful living work of art. Uh, there's many different varieties, many different colors of koi, uh, and they're judged primarily on the size, the body shape, the skin quality, the pattern, the edging of pattern amongst some of the credentials. Very much so, the uh, Japanese koi fish is the national fish of Japan and can be found, it's been, they've been breeding them for over 200 years and can be found all the way up, up in Niigata, in the mountains of Niigata, down to the southernmost islands, even in Okinawa. They're not pets, they're not cute and cuddly, they're just fish. And to cap it all, they can't be insured. So what possesses a man to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on koi carp? I spend it because it's my hobby. I've heard all sorts of prices quoted on koi. 2,000, 5,000. They're not worth anything unless you've got a buyer for them. 10,000, 20,000. We was offered 150,000 pounds for it last year. 25,000 I've done a few times now. It's about winning the All Japan Show. Yeah, it is lots of money, yeah. It's the most I've ever seen or heard of a, anybody paying for a koi. It's my hobby. I work hard. Bought the koi to win the All Japan Show. The money doesn't go into it. The Japanese koi industry began in the mid-19th century purely by accident. Yamakoshi village in the Niigata prefecture of northwest Japan experienced incredible levels of snowfall which in the mid-1800s would isolate the region for months throughout the winter. The farmers in this area grew wild carp in their rice paddies as a source of food and as time went on, crossbreeding produced mutations of colour leading to the fish we now know as koi carp. At the Tokyo Exhibition of 1914, every region of Japan was invited to show something produced locally, and the farmers of Yamakoshi brought their nishiki goi, or coloured carp, placing them in the moat which surrounded the Imperial Palace. From that point on, a multi-billion dollar industry was born, and today the villages of Yamakoshi are the worldwide home of these spectacular ornamental fish. The techniques used to breed and grow certain bloodlines of koi are both precise and highly advanced, hence the finest specimens cost incredible sums of money. But in the past few years, the koi industry has been hit by disaster. In October 2004, an earthquake measuring 6.8 on the Richter scale hit the Niigata Mountains, leaving 35 dead, thousands injured and the region devastated. Millions of dollars worth of high-grade koi were killed in one night. And as the industry recovers from one setback, 
it has suffered a second blow in the form of the Koi herpes virus, or KHV. It has swept through the hobby, causing panic amongst breeders, dealers and collectors throughout the world. It's only in recent years that Western hobbyists have been granted access to the very top percentage of high-grade koi, the championship winning fish. Whether this is due to money or respect is unproven. In the honor laden Japanese culture, we would expect it to be the latter, but it seems that although some of the best and most valuable koi are owned by Westerners, none have as yet won any of the top prizes in Japan. Koi that is the subject of this film was bred at what is genuinely seen as the number one koi producing farm in Japan. Located deep in the valleys of Daiwa in the prefecture of Hiroshima, the Sakai fish farm is represented in the UK by dedicated koi entrepreneur Tony Pittam, a British koi dealer based in Kent. As I was growing up, my father used to uh, religiously collect the Japanese uh, magazines. They're good for the pictures, boy, he used to say. I managed to see that all these grand champions all had the same symbol next door to them. After going to Japan a few times with various uh, agents and dealers, I managed to ask a few of them, who's this? And the answer that always come back was, oh, that's Sakai, Hiroshima. So I started thinking to myself, you know, <laughs> this must be the place to go. Uh, I wrote to them several times, rang them, sorry, no fish for sale. I was judging for the first time at the All Japan Koi Show and uh, I've been assigned a Japanese interpreter. His name was Ken and uh, we had a great time and we got on really well. At the end of the day we shook hands and uh, he introduced himself, oh, I am Kentro Sakai, Sakai Fish Farm. And at the time I heard ah, the door opening. Please come to my farm, you'd be more than welcome to come to my farm. And uh, on the first visit down there, my, uh, my thoughts were reconfirmed that, yes, Sakai is by far the biggest and best koi farm in Japan. The way koi is perceived in Japan and Asia compared to the UK is completely different. Uh, seems in, in Europe, people want to buy a koi, put it in their pond, and they actually want to see it grow and enjoy seeing that koi every day. Maybe treat it a little bit like a pet and uh, just enjoy the koi growing, that's what they get out of it. In Japan, it's seen more as a class system or an honor system, uh, and the kudos connected to winning top prizes at the All Japan Koi Show is what that particular customer's after. I think about the time that I was uh, getting to know Kentaro, uh, I heard about this Kahaku, a two-year-old Kahaku that at the time had broken all previous records set and had sold for an uh, unbelievable £54,000. Two years later, he said, Tony, please come to my farm. I want you to have a look at the Maritain. Uh, I think it's going to be ready to go to the All Japan Koi Show next year and it's ready to sell. I've seen it in the pond and it just took my breath away. Uh, for someone that sees koi all the time, this one was the best I've ever seen. A perfect example, I thought, of a koi. On that day, uh, Martin Plows and Mark Crampton was with me and uh, it just so happened that they ended walking away with it. Koi are seen as the most valuable and most beautiful of fish. Uh, there are some koi per kilo are worth more than the, uh, the biggest and most expensive tuna. Uh, they're a beautiful koi to keep and to watch, very calming to see them in your pond. And there seems that they're very addictive to a lot of uh, collectors in the way they study and want better quality koi. Uh, many people say you start off koi with a kahaku and you end with kahaku. 
Um, they're a beautiful, beautiful fish. And uh, there's many shows in Japan, and there was many shows worldwide at that time. But the number one koi show in the world is uh, also known as the World Championships of Koi, and that's held in Tokyo every year. Uh, I'd actually judged at this show in 1999, one of the first uh, foreign judges to be allowed uh, access to judge. And that's actually when I met um, Kentro Sakai from Sakai Fish Farm. So they have this koi show every year, and the uh, different varieties of koi are judged in size classes and in the variety classes. And I was blown away with the quality of fish at this show. And it was always my dream as a young man. Uh, I remember my father uh, telling my father that I'm going to win the All Japan Koi Show when I'm older, which he told me was impossible, but I like a challenge. And uh, yeah, we uh, were hooked. I was hooked, my ambition was to win Grand Champion, or to supply the Koi that could win Grand Champion at the All Japan Koi Show. Then in 2004, I met two crazy English guys that had the same dream. So we scoured the length and breadth of Japan looking for a koi that could become the best koi in the world of that year. The chance to be in the position we're in is so, so remote. We'll never ever have that chance again. We're on the verge of making history. If we go and win the All Japan Show, no one's done that before. Uh, and I don't think a Westerner will get a chance to do it again. The fish was mind blowing. And I thought at the time, yeah, I'm gonna buy this, whatever price it is. We worked hard over several years to build up the relationship, to be in that position, that when a, a, a fish become available, that it, we was offered, we, was, we tried to buy the fish for a long time and we knew the fish was, just, it was actually for sale. But they wouldn't sell it to us because they still never trusted us enough to sell it to us. And it took a long time. The fish was then sold again. And, and it was then sold again back to us be, before we could actually build up the trust that, hold on, we're not going to take this koi back to the UK, we're going to show it in Japan. I actually waited then for Martin to arrive in Japan. I told him it was coming up for sale. And he, he turned around and said, well, I might buy it. And I said, no, I'm going to buy it. It's a hundred thousand pounds, regardless of whether you've got a million pound, ten million pound, or twenty million pound. It's a hundred thousand pound on a on a koi that could die tomorrow. Could it could break as it could break a fin tomorrow? And it's useless. We spoke about it, and I said I'm not prepared to spend that kind of money on one fish, on my own. And he turned around and said, if he would have said he was going to have it on his own, he would have bought it. And I think he thought like me, it's a lot of money this for one fish. Most people in the world would think we're raving lunatics, and maybe they're right. Yeah. Look at this fish, it's just cost £100,000, was offered 150 for it, and said no. Because we won a plastic trophy. <laughs> I must admit, to this day, we've, we've never argued about it, we've never... We both know what's best for the fish. And what's best for the fish is Ryuki Narita a descendant of one of Japan's most famous koi dynasties and the world's leading koi professional. Ryuki is possibly the most important player in the team. His expertise at growing on and refining high-grade koi is paramount to the success of Mark and Martin's championship bid. Since their audacious purchase, the boy's fish has resided at Ryuki's secret facility somewhere in Japan. Not many people know of it, but there is uh, a Ryuki's house, which is no more than 10 minutes' drive from the main farm. You've got maybe the equivalent of, what, three big swimming pools, with probably over £20 million worth of fish swimming around that customers have bought and entrusted to Narita to uh, grow on in order to put into the All Japan Koi Show, the ZNA Show, in order to try and achieve the best prizes they can. The big pond there, uh, you've maybe got 16 pieces of koi, all generally over 85 centimetres, uh, all with very good chances of winning high prizes in uh, nearly all shows in Japan. Uh, one which we obviously know about, the Maritain, it will have very good chances of taking the top honours in the, the two top shows in Japan. There was a little bit of bad feeling last year uh, and I think a little bit of bad feeling from the Japanese. 
we did have the majority of the most respected dealers and breeders in Japan coming up to Mark and Martin and congratulating them, saying, said all that, you know, uh, all fairs in love and war, and we lost that year. Each year in October, the koi farms of Japan reap their ponds in the annual harvest. It's at this point that dealers and hobbyists from across the world converge on the mountain villages of Niigata, parting with huge amounts of cash. For Mark and Martin, however, this year's visit has added significance. Not only are they looking to purchase yet more future champions, they are also there to check out their current stock being looked after in ponds all over Japan. Also on the agenda, and the primary reason for this trip, is to check on the progress of their prize contender. Almost a little bit embarrassed. You know, I normally I wouldn't come in and buy it. It's not their number one fish they produce that year, so I wouldn't come in and buy it. But I'm not coming in and buying it. I'm being offered it as compensation. So as compensation, yes, thank you very much. It's a lovely coin. See, what they're doing, I think, is a good gesture. They could have just said, look, we agreed that if a fish died, it died. Sorry, mate. I mean, really, I couldn't say anything about it. They've gone away, they've had a chat, and they say, well, look, yeah, we got this as a good gesture. While in the area, the boys are reminded of a transaction that took place at another farm before the earthquake struck. Unsure if the fish had survived, they thought they'd better check it out. He advertised in the magazine for two or three issues. And I found out he collected the money. Instead of him paying the money, which we thought we're not going to get the money, Mark bought a fish off him and he paid me the money. Hence, Mark's got this fish. Don't forget, it's two years since I've seen it. Just bought it, really, with Martin, just spur of the moment thing. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, it didn't start off exactly with winning the uh, All Japan Koi Show. We started off with the dream of winning the National Koi Show in the UK, which Mark Crampton managed to do with a kahaku from Sakai that Koi Waterbar managed to source for him. Uh, at that time, Mark and Martin didn't know each other, and they both met on one of our trips to Japan, where we take the customers to Japan, take them around the farms, and introduce them to Koi, which they can uh, decide to buy. Going to Japan and selecting your own koi is a real experience. The hospitality from the breeders, the culture in Japan, uh, the variety of koi that you get to see. Uh, yes, a lot of dealers in your home countries will have a great selection of koi, but by going to Japan you get a much wider range uh, and you can see koi that you wouldn't ordinarily see in your home countries. You know, uh, the cost of koi can be, can be very, very high and not many dealers are going to bring koi back with the hope of selling them. So customers that are into that kind of quality of koi will go to Japan those, their, themselves and hunt for the koi themselves. Reports from Tony how it's improved since the last show. The driver's confident. He's our main man. It's been 
relaxed driving the surfers. You're rather quiet in the front there, Ryuki. The fish must still be alive. You worry? Yeah. You worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's in his hands and nobody else's at the moment. Yeah. He's got more pressure than us. Yep. These are our guard dogs we've been playing at the moment. Keep any of them one thing get. They might look small, but they are quite vicious. Mark and Martin have been buying high-grade koi for a collective 20 years, but it's only in the last three to four that potential prize-winning fish have been made available for them to purchase. This is what it's all about. This single fish of the Meriton Kahaku variety cost around 100 grand and has been pampered in this secret pond for the past two and a half years. In that time, the boys have spent about one hour with it. So why is this fish worth 100 grand? Is it the snow white skin and even pigmentation? Is it the formidable body shape? Is it the classic four step pattern that runs the length of its body? Or is it that there are two crazy Englishmen more than willing to part with that amount of cash? Number one. Easy. <laughs> Can we put it back in? Yeah? Awesome. It's, it's better than last year. It's awesome. It's awesome. This time last year, it didn't look as good as it looks now at this time, and he's still got three months to polish it for sure. It's going to win. <laughs> Amazed. Amazing. Really happy. Can't, can't tell you what I really think. I swear, but no, that's awesome. I think that will be champion at all Japan this year. Convinced now. He's done a fantastic job with it. Yeah. It's yeah. Still three months of polish it, right? Yeah. And this is, this is, this is seven, I think. I wasn't right happy about catching it, to be honest. No. Only because one scale off on the shoulder f***ed all our dream up, really. Money well spent, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to win. I thought it wouldn't be hard to improve it from last year. Better. But... He's doing it, hasn't he, for us? He's the man that will win as the old Japan. The luckless Martin seizes the opportunity to check out another koi in his collection. I've been unlucky with it. It's a really high, high grade koi. Uh, and it had. First year I entered it, it caught a cold on the way to the show, come second. The second year the show didn't go ahead. Then the third year it had a problem with its intestines and didn't grow. Farm is of such a size that the fish are spread around, and part of the fun is finding the ones that belong to you. Bit of a gamble, this one. Expensive gamble as well. Probably. Proper price. 50,000 English pounds. Okay, 20 for it. But. It was full of eggs. It was a gamble where the body had come back right. Quite a lot of people showed interest in it. I took the gamble with it, but it hasn't spawned well, so... But Mark's sorrow is short-lived when his fish is bold. Does that mean I have to come back? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
I'm gonna have to get a permanent residence out here, aren't I? I'm going to the ZA now. Could be another one behind. He's <laughs> just said it's a good chance of winning the ZA next month. Um, second biggest koi show. They bought the fish last year to show at the uh, Old Japan show. Uh, with the guarantee we could have it at half price if it never won. Well, if we never won, so we've got it at half price, but for sure we think it'll win this year. So maybe I'll have to give him the other half. If you want to buy it, you can buy it for four million yen. You don't want to buy it? Best in variety, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Good chance. Good chance. But no more discount. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to buy any fish this year. I'm going to buy a fish. I've got that. I need to buy a fish for you then. We're going to keep in this case and all we want to meet nice. And you have to drive him mad and drive him mad because they have things hidden away. So just what have you got, what have you got, what have you got? And eventually you'll break down and show something. At the recent auction, Mark instructed Tony to buy him a fish on recommendation, having only seen a photo. I bought this on, on Tony's advice, really. The never, first I, time you've uh, done that? Yeah, because it's hard, isn't it, to, to buy something from... I like the pattern, but then Tony explains about how good the body was, how good the skin was, what the chances was of this winning a prize in Japan. And so really, something I've not done before, but quite happy with it. The, uh, the auction probably generates in the region of... Uh, 60 bit. Yeah. 200 to 300 million yen which is in the region of one to two million pounds in the space of four hours on Koya. 1.4 million, yeah. Seven grand, but I'll basically go double that. That's, I want to win the Old Japan. I'm being greedy now. I want to win the Old Japan, the ZNA and the Wacky Goy. And don't forget the Inazuma. They said might win Tokyo Dome as well. Martin's going to be miles behind, isn't he? They never catch me up, will they? <laughs> well, no, he's not winning. He's just, he's just been, he's just been spending money where I'm. He's not winning. But, but I do it. In a, I do, I'm just doing it in a different way to how he does it. So, but we'll see. I'm in front of him now. He'll never catch me. He keeps smiling, but he can see. It's, 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 I think Mark's been wasting a lot of money, but I don't really want to say it when he's listening. He's just seen the fish what we've got there. I mean, imagine all them and a couple of bats with the and Yeah. Well, I'm going to Sakai's October koi harvest at their secret mountain mud ponds is legendary and presents big time hobbyists with a rare first look at this year's choice stock. News on the Japanese grapevine has filtered through to the boys. In an unprecedented move by the Japanese, another European who usually buys through Tony has supposedly been offered the super mask and is currently in Nagoya viewing the koi. 
I was talking to Kendra at lunch and his father's fish is probably the only real contender, and it's a strong contender that could beat the Marathon. So we're just running over all the options that's available to us, really. And there is someone else that's interested in the Koi that could could shy it and beat us, a Westerner. Yeah, can afford to buy it, but do, do you want it? Do you want it? I don't know. I don't think it's an. I don't think. Listen, it takes a lot to spend that help out that money for a koi. Mm. Uh, he hasn't and, even got a pond. And I can see how doubtful he was over the two million yeah. yen koi last year. Yeah. How big an expense that was for him. Mm. But we buy two million koi f on a weekly basis mm. for a little giggle every now and then. Just to kill him. <laughs> Maybe we worry too much, eh? Yeah, I think so. I, just, I, I think and if he does do it and it beats it, then we become second again. Try again next year. No, I can't keep one on. What well, you can't just give up, can you? <coughs> Hopefully, what was Cold said worthless, though, wasn't it? What was said? To, what was said to us this year? Yeah, koi is young. Yeah, yeah. Koi can still grow. Yeah, the other koi's a year younger than the mountain. Yeah. Ninety centimeter. No, it was 80... 89. Yeah. It's big. We said, oh, 90. And he went, oh, no, 89. Yeah. 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 Hmm. What's he saying? No, oh, can't get him yet. No service. No service. Yeah, look, I see yesterday. He didn't have to tell us, did he? But he said to us, look, blah, 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 blah. But here's the one that turned around and said, not good idea to put both fish in Yeah. Time. But what I'm saying is... If somebody said to you, "This is your dough, but I want it to go to the show," you'd have to. You don't want to turn that kind of dough down, are you? Mm. Said, "No, I'm not." Right, well, speak to him later and see what he says. We wasn't told about that fish until we got here last this week, and then Ryuki told us. Which, all right, fair enough. If the fish has developed and become a strong, strong contender, it's fair enough. It's all been kept hush hush, but the rest of it's unfolding as we go along. We're the only two that can lose, or it appears that way. But it could backfire on everyone. Kendra bred both fish, so both fish are from Sakai Fish Farm. One of the two fish, everybody thinks will win. So his farm wins. Tony's earned and supplied both, both the fish. So he earns from both the fish, regardless who wins. If one of them wins, he still supplied the fish. Ryuki, the same. But everybody could lose because they could split all the votes. And someone could come in from behind, pretty much like they did last year with a shower because they weaken our side votes-wise by putting two fish into the shot, and then everybody could lose. Which if it, which if it's what happens, I'll, I hope we all lose, everybody loses. Yeah, something happened. Uh, there was another koi at Narita Koi Farm that uh, actually I'd reserved the year before when it was only 80 centimetres, bearing in mind in those days, big koi only usually grew three or four centimetres a year. So uh, I, at the time I was thinking, yeah, maybe this, we didn't want to put all our eggs into one basket. So I'd actually reserved this other koi for a Belgian customer. Uh, so yeah, that was quite uh, um, a difficult um, situation when the, the guys saw the Maritain, Mark and Martin saw the Maritain, uh, and they also saw the, this other koi that later become to known as Yamato. Uh, and at the time, the, the Yamato had grown 11 centimeters in one year, that, which is unheard of for a koi of that, of that age. Um, so yes, um, 
the, uh, the, the customer, the Belgium customer that had reserved the koi. I called him, koi's looking very good, you need to come and, come and look at it. He came, viewed the koi and decided against buying. In his, in his eyes, the koi was not good enough to win the All Japan Koi Show. Bit of a confusing time for myself and, and Mark and Martin. Uh, in our hearts, we wanted the Maritain Kahaku to go forward and win the show. But yeah, in, in, in Narita's a businessman, you know, and uh, he had a, a, another fish that could compete. He had other people, Japanese and other nationalities, inquiring about the sale of the koi. And even though I'd reserved the koi at that time, we hadn't bought it. So it was a very difficult discussion, but uh, in the end, uh, Mark and Martin decided to buy Yamato, uh, the other koi, and see which looked best, yeah, just prior to the show, and then they would enter that one. You win both ways, yeah? Way one, you keep all customers happy, and two chances at all Japan show. Happy. So this is the only way. If you say, if you say yes, you can buy the koi, but on condition you do not enter into All Japan Koi Show this year. He will understand because he would expect that kind of service from you as well. Okay, boss. See, we 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 resolve difficult situations. The boys are obviously a little bit upset because they feel as their broker and as the seller, myself and Ryuki, should have offered it to uh, the boys first. Uh, I was unaware until we actually turned up to have a look at the Maritain that Dan was interested in the, uh, and had asked a month ago to look at the uh, fish. The situation which I've tried to set up is that he is offered the fish, yeah? With a condition that it's not shown this January, yeah? Where uh, Ryuki is a little bit hesitant about saying that because at the end of the day, he wants to sell the fish. It's a lot of money. Probably looking in the region of about 15 million for that fish. He needs to sell the fish. So from his point of view, he was saying he doesn't want to put a restriction on buying it because he may not buy it. I mean, I, I mean, everyone wants to win the Koi Show. You know, Mark and Martin aren't the only people that want to win, but I do feel that this situation can be resolved. It's, it's not a problem. Oh, it is a problem, but it's a problem that hopefully we can solve. At Kentaro's father's house, the team anxiously await news from Nagoya. And the news is that the European rival has passed on the supermask. However, a powerful Japanese hobbyist is showing interest. Kentaro said he thinks they're not going to buy. So, uh... But someone else might. But, listen, listen. San may be going to buy it, yeah? But he said he would not show in January. Well, I don't know what you feel about that. I don't know, I, have you heard that? That's the news we said we were waiting for. Yeah. Um, being fair, I mean, I, I'm standing as well with you, Martin. If so wanted to do that, I'd, I'd have been over the moon. Yeah. But you can't I wouldn't go, it, no, yeah. but I, I think the question should be asked to him, would he like to buy it? If yeah. not, it will be sorted, you know, to... Look, if, sort of, if he's going to buy it and show it in January, then I've got to buy it in front of him. But he yeah. said he wouldn't. But... Yeah, but he can't buy it and then but change But also, Super Mario San wouldn't be charged 15 million. No. I reckon if you bid him 11, he'd probably take it. Or oh. 10, Ryuki. It's like a game of chess, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But the very expensive way pawns. is... You buy. Yeah. <laughs> it makes everybody happy if you buy. You know? If you some buy. Yeah. Maybe he enter if look yeah, good. It's, yeah. It's still chance. Yeah, yeah. still chance. Plus send my friend. Mm. But he's a very powerful man. Yeah. So you can't really no. if he says I'm gonna show, he's gonna show.
to lighten the mood further, Kent's row has finally caved and is offering Mark and Martin his best two-year-olds to have a look at. The price is 6.5 million yen, which is a snip at about 32 grand for the power. Kentaro offers his thoughts. I'm thinking about future of the fish. How this, you know, it's gonna be in future. I um, mean, imagine the body shape, you know, everything. I, I, I already told them the price, but they said, Mark surprised because it was expensive. <laughs> Negotiations start with Martin's sub story. Mark continues to apply the pressure in his own inimitable manner. Here we go. Can we do two point or four point five minutes? Kentaro is struggling to keep up with the English style negotiations. Kentaro counters aggressively. Five. I saw you. Give me a break. Heads or tails? And Tony adds to the confusion. Okay, come on. Okay. Okay. So, heads or tails, what? For 4.5 or 5 for 2. So that means okay. your one would be 2.5 yeah, okay. or 3. Okay. Best out of 3. <laughs> <laughs> no, one go. Spike Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I lose for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, how about the marathon? <laughs> you win. He's <laughs> <laughs> checking me, he didn't believe it. So I just Te tempo. tempo. Okay. My luck. Okay. Okay. But it landed on 4, too. So yeah. if, if it lands on uh, 10, yeah. he gets for 4.5. Yeah. yeah. For two. Yeah. If it lands on other one, yeah. you get five for two. Okay. Okay? Okay. Ichi ni san. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Kenny boy! Bad news! Wrap him up. Not good day. Ken, I tried to clear it properly for you as well. No, he just, we couldn't agree a price. So one of us won and one of us lost, and this time we won. Which is quite a good move, that, isn't it? Yeah, it was a contender um, to our fish. We've been, probably been given the option to purchase that koi. We've declined and we're going to stay with the maritan. It's We've had faith in it from day one. It's a better fish. We think it's a better it's, we fish. We think it's a better fish. Where do you stop every time you have a koi that's a contender, go and buy it? We believe our fish is a better fish, so we're going to stick with it. Bring it on. And, yeah. Prepare their fish. Look forward to January. Roll on, yeah, roll on January. the breeders which one was going to win? It was very close. It was very close indeed. And in the end, we went on Ryuki Narita's and Kentro Sakai's advice that Yamato was looking the best and would stand the best chance of winning. Uh, the, the, my customers and myself included were a little bit disappointed uh, that the uh, Maritain wouldn't go, after all the money we'd spent on it and the time and effort, and the fact that it narrowly missed the year before. We was very disappointed that there was another fish 
on the on the, on the table now. And uh, so after um, my job as broker was to broker maybe a better deal for the guys. And in fact, the deal I ended up brokering was the guys will take the other koi for a little bit less than the other one, but still for, for, for a large amount. But if the koi won the grand champion, then Kentro Sakai would buy the koi back for us for what we'd paid for uh, uh, in order to use for breeding. And it turns out uh, it was an excellent uh, uh, parent koi and he more than made his money back. January, Tokyo, the All Japan Show. This is what it's all about and there's only one fish that can win and it's not the Maritan. In the 10 weeks since the boys left Hiroshima, the super mask has continued to grow at an astounding rate, now measuring an astonishing 91 centimetres. The Japanese team have been hounding the boys to buy the fish, but Mark and Martin have been reluctant to accept that the Maritan is unable to take the title. Hours have been spent on the phone from one side of the world to the other, and the boys finally agree to do it the Japanese way. Under direct and unrelenting pressure from their advisors, the super mask has been purchased. But why the pressure? Are Mark and Martin being primed for victory? Is it their turn to win? Have they paid their dues or just their money? Ryuki and Kentaro have a host of other customers with bigger wallets than Mark and Martin, but the Japanese collector who declared his interest in the fish in October wasn't even offered it. A tense journey from the UK touches down in Japan early evening, but instead of sleep, the boys stay up through the night intent on meeting Ryuki as he delivers the fish to the show venue in the early hours. It was only two days ago that the boys agreed to withdraw the Maritan and they're still not convinced. Ryuki, what's the skin been like? Has it been good? The skin, the skin before it travelled was good? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Finish, yeah, yeah, yeah. Impossible to see anyway now. Yeah, yeah, I have to sleep as well. <laughs> it's now <laughs> quarter past five in the morning. Oh. We've been drinking. We're looking in dark with torch lights and everything. What's in the um, you yeah, judge, You can't judge a coin in these conditions. No, you can't. The body all looks I can, good. All I can body tell is the body looks, looks good. good and the white is much, much better. Yeah, but it's not as good as the right. others. Not as good as what? As a maritime. We was, uh, I was, I was actually in, in, in the showground. Uh, the uh, camera crew weren't allowed in. Uh, and uh, uh, a lot of the judging is done in Japanese and what they do is they, they pick maybe the four best fish at the show and then they go forward to see who uh, uh, is going to be the grand champion. And basically, uh, until one of the koi gets 50%, then uh, there's the, the, or the other koi are all in play. So basically, if there's four koi, uh, until one koi gets more than 50%, the one that gets the, the least votes is taken out, yeah? But with, with Yamato, uh, it was a landslide and uh, we won on the first vote and got more than 51%. It was a confusion of emotions, really. We were elated. We were... Uh, I was very relieved, yeah, that uh, we'd finally done it. Uh, it didn't feel as good as maybe it would have done if the Maritain had won the previous year. But hey, that's all part of the game. So, uh, yes, we were very, very, very excited and honoured to be able to, to have uh, achieved this uh, ambition and feat. Very good. <laughs> Is it a winner? Huh? Is it a winner? I hope so.
secrets out, isn't it? This is yeah. the reason we gave the Maritano. Yeah. Um, which we've, which has been hard work this last week that we've had to keep away from everybody that the Maritano still come in, we still enter the Maritano and if you go to the vat over there you'll see the Maritano up until a few days ago was still coming. But we realised and being explained we were going to be too strong, we've got too coy competed against each other. We've took their advice and this is this is the one we've gone with, isn't it? Yeah. This is the one we've gone with. Mark, it looks very good. Yeah. Huh? Quite chuffed there, actually. Yeah. Satisfied but powerless to affect the outcome, the boys retire to get some rest while Tony considers the next 24 hours. Getting back to last year with the Maritain, at this, at this stage of the day, uh, the Thursday just before the judging on Friday, all the fish come in, so everyone's anxiously looking at the fish, checking who's got the, you know, what kind of condition they're coming in. And uh, last year at this time, we were getting very, very good uh, reports on the Maritain, you know. Many people coming up, oh yeah, beautiful fish, champion fish. At the time, there was a number of reasons uh, that could influence the judging. One, Sakai is extremely strong uh, at these events, and there is sometimes a little bit of anti-Sakai feeling. But of course, on the other side, there's a very, very strong uh, consensus and a very strong uh, group of people voting for, for Sakai fish as well. We did think that the, the foreigner thing may play a part, and whether it did or whether it didn't, I think there's some fractions of Japanese breeders that don't want the prize to go outside Japan, which is, I think, understandable in a way. Uh, it is a purely Japanese thing that really hasn't been encroached on before in this way. We come to this year, and we've got the best fish at the show. It's a remarkable fish, the skin's looking good, the body's looking good, the pattern's interesting. Uh, but we're at this time, and I think maybe last year, where we were thinking, yes, we've, our fish looks the best. You know, it's still down to independent people's personal opinion on when it gets down to two, which one they like. And, at the end of the day, it's always up in the air, you know, nothing's a, uh, nothing's a concrete result, is it, you know, nothing's guaranteed. thing about judging day is that the only people allowed in apart from the judges are the press. Luckily for us, the voting for the grand champion is done first and it goes like this. There's around a hundred judges who each have one vote. There may be ten fish that get a vote and if any one of those fish takes more than 50% it's crowned grand champion. If not, a second round of voting takes place on the top five and so on until one fish hits the magic 50. i
And now you ended up here. Where are we? Uh, yes. Uh, after 2006, uh, I started selling a lot more koi to Europe uh, and trying to spread the word of koi uh, and the love of koi. Uh, I then moved to South Africa. Uh, we sold koi to America, uh, to the African continent. And then in 2017, uh, we started Koi Water Barn Dubai. Uh, and I'm very honored and privileged to be able to introduce the love of koi to the Middle East. We uh, have great customers in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, uh, new customers in Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. And uh, yeah, I think from the Japanese breeders' perspective, uh, it's good for me as an ex-winner to be able to spread, uh, spread the love of koi to different continents and to find new markets. Uh, the uh, Asian markets since 2007, 2008 have been extremely strong. Uh, there's shows nearly every week in Indonesia uh, and the love of koi is spreading worldwide. Okay, yes, this is the trophy that uh, we was awarded in 2006. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, it's been many people's, many koi lovers, koi hobbyist dreams uh, to win this trophy. And that's come true for a very few individuals. Uh, now, yeah, maybe it's our dream to try and, and win again. Uh, and uh, hopefully in the Middle East or, or other countries, uh, we can introduce koi that can win or at least compete at a high level uh, at the All Japan Koi Show.